everybody. Thanks so much for being here. It's great to see all your faces and catch up with you. And great to see you again, Ray. Thank you so much for putting together all the technological parts of uh, our sharing this evening and our virtual Holy Week and Easter drama. We're having a little conversation here and um, that conversation will serve as an introduction to the story that we are about to tell. <sighs> Can you guys believe it's Palm Sunday? Easter is almost here. We're still in the midst of a pandemic and we all wonder if we're ever gonna get back to normal. And if we do, we hope it's soon. It's crazy, isn't it? Here we are in another Zoom meeting. Who'd have ever imagined we would get tired of screen time? <laughs> I hope things get back to normal soon. Me too. Though I think normal will be forever changed. Agreed. If normal is different, I sure hope it's for the better. We sure are hoping for a lot of things, aren't we? Throughout this whole pandemic, we keep hearing about what we hope. We hope we can get together in person, not on Zoom. Like competitive sports, have parties. Can you believe I'm hoping to be back in school? How wild is that? That's a good one for sure. You know, it's interesting we keep talking about hope. And here it is, Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. What do you mean? Well... You know how Pastor Key keeps referring to the fact that we are people of hope, that we are people of hope. Pastor sure has a point these days. So, I think what he means is all the time that we are people of hope, all of the time. That's a curious thing. I'm not so sure it's all that curious. I think as Christmas we have a story of hope and a story that changes, normal forever. I think we need to take a look at that story again. This is a story of love and grace, mercy and forgiveness. This is a story of God's promises kept. This is the story of a God who slipped into our skin and came down to earth to show us the heart of God and to save us, all people, his beloved children. This is a story of a journey, a journey chosen by God, and journey traveled by our God. It was not an easy journey. It wasn't fair that an innocent person should suffer, be convicted, be crucified. It wasn't fair, but God decided it was necessary. This is our story of hope. Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of the Passover, a time when God saved his people from those who meant them harm many years before. As they were approaching Jerusalem, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village, my friends, and immediately as you enter, you will find a colt tied there. He has never been ridden before. Untie him and bring him to me. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back immediately. I will go, Lord. Thank you, good sir. Let us hurry and do as our Lord has commanded. It has been a long journey and it will be good to share a meal and have some rest. Let's go. What's going on here? What are you doing on time that colt? Our Lord commanded us to do this. Do as your Lord has commanded. So they took the colt to Jesus. They threw their cloak on it and Jesus sat on it. Jesus began to enter the city of Jerusalem. Many people spread their clothes on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the field. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the high heaven. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Oh, Lord. Come by here. Not everyone was so happy about Jesus and how popular he was with the people. Sadly, many of the high priests and the scribes wanted to get rid of Jesus. He didn't always agree with what they taught the people. Jesus' heart was filled with love and grace. They wanted to be in charge and weren't happy that people followed Jesus because people thought that Jesus was the Son of God. The leaders' hearts were jealous and they wanted Jesus out of the way. They wanted him to die, but they were afraid that people would have an uprising if they hurt Jesus. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas, saw an opportunity to make some money, and he went to the chief priest to betray Jesus. What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? We will give you 30 pieces of silver. They paid Judas. He would betray Jesus by kissing him. Sometimes we're like Judas. We betray Jesus by making choices that do not reflect we are his beloved children. Jesus forgives us just like he forgave Judas. If Jesus can forgive us, we need to forgive ourselves and continue to treasure the gift of life God has given us. We the festival of the Passover was near. Jesus sent two of his disciples and said, Go into that city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Then follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of that house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you to a large room upstairs. It will be all furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and they went into the city and they found everything just as he had told them and then they prepared the passover meal while jesus and the disciples were gathered to share the passover meal jesus got up from the table took off his outer robe and wrapped a towel around his waist he poured water in a basin and began to wash his disciples feet and dry them with the towel one of the disciples simon peter was very confused lord are you going to wash my feet you should not be doing that. You are my Lord. Simon Peter objected at first, but Jesus did wash his feet. Jesus knew Peter would soon deny knowing him. Thank you, Lord. After Jesus washed their feet, he sat back down at the table and shared a very important lesson with them. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, so you ought to wash one another's feet. Jesus wants us to love and care for others just as he cares for us. Jesus was a different kind of Lord and King. He was a servant King who shared love and grace. Jesus wants us to serve and care for others just as he did. Jesus knew sad things would happen later that evening. He shared, he shared one of the disciples would betray him and one would say he never knew Jesus. 
They were confused and surprised to hear this sad news. They didn't understand all that would happen was, was a part of God's plan. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, broke it, blessed it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. This holy meal shared by Christians today, we experience God's love, grace, and forgiveness in this holy meal. We call this meal Holy Communion. The of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. After they shared the meal, Jesus asked them to go with him to a place where he could pray. Jesus was feeling afraid because he knew things were going to become very sad, painful, scary for him. He knew his Father in Heaven would help him do what he needed to do, and he needed his friends to stay awake a bit longer and be with him while he prayed to his Father to help him. And so they left the upper room and went to the Garden of Gethsemane so Jesus could pray. Sometimes we are scared and sad like Jesus felt. We can pray for God to help us, just like Jesus did. Someone's sleeping, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's sleeping, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's sleeping, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, Lord, kumbaya. And Jesus told some of the disciples to sit in a special place in the garden to wait for him while he prayed. Then he took Peter, James, and John with him to the place where he would pray. He told them he was frightened and asked them to please stay awake with him. Two times the disciples fell asleep, even after Jesus asked them to stay awake. Jesus felt sad. Jesus needed his friends to be with him just like we need our friends. Sometimes we feel sad, just like Jesus. Sometimes we say or do things that make others feel sad. We need to share love, grace, and forgiveness, just like Jesus. Jesus prayed to his father for help. He knew his father would be with him always, and that gave him courage. He knew that time had come, and as he's talking with his disciples, <laughs> Judas, the disciple who betrayed Jesus, came towards him. Soldiers followed Judas and watched as he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. The soldiers grabbed Jesus and told him he was arrested. Peter tried to stop them. He took out his sword and cut off the soldier's ear. Jesus told him it was not right to hurt the soldier, and Jesus healed him. The soldier bound Jesus and put him away to the high priest, Caiaphas. The disciples ran away. Another disciple followed Jesus at a distance. While Jesus was taken to the high priest, they sat by a fire in the courtyard, hoping they might see how Jesus was. Some people recognized Peter as one of Jesus' followers. Aren't you one of his disciples? No, I am not. This man was also with Jesus. No, I don't know him.
This man was also with him. He's also a Galilean. Man, I don't know what you're talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him earlier that evening. Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. Peter walked away. He was so sad, he could not stop crying. People lied to the high priest about Jesus. They said he blasphemed, which is not respecting God. They did not believe that Jesus was God. Peter was afraid and he, he denied knowing Jesus. Yet Jesus, Jesus chose Peter to be the rock of the church. Sometimes we are like Peter. We are afraid to share we believe in Jesus. We are afraid to stand up for what we know is right. All the chief priests and elders gathered together to plot against Jesus. They wanted Jesus to die, but they wanted someone else to take responsibility for that decision. They bound and beat Jesus and took him to appear before the governor Pontius Pilate. When Judas learned that Jesus was condemned, he was very sorry and wanted forgiveness. He tried to return the 30 pieces of silver to the high priests, but they considered it blood money. They decided to use the money for a burial place for foreigners. God would forgive Judas, but he could not forgive himself, and he took his own life. Are you king of the Jews? You say so. My kingdom is not of this world. For I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? Pilate didn't understand that Jesus was the truth, the Son of God, who would give his very life for everyone, including Pilate. Pilate sensed that Jesus had done nothing wrong, that the high priests were jealous of Jesus and wanted him to die. It was a custom that during the festival of the Passover, a prisoner was released. Pilate decided to offer the priests and the crowd who had gathered together the choice of releasing Jesus, who had done nothing wrong, or releasing the criminal Barabbas. Much to the surprise of Pilate, the people wanted to free Barabbas and crucify Jesus. Three times, Pilate tried to convince the people that he could not find anything wrong that Jesus had done. And three times the people shouted, Crucify, crucify him! Crucify him. him! When Pilate realized he could do nothing to save Jesus, he took some water and washed his hands and said, I am an innocent of this man's blood. See it for yourselves. Then the soldiers took Jesus. They stripped him and beat him. They put a scarlet robe on him and made a crown out of thorns and put it on his head and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spit on him and beat him. Then they took off the robe and put his clothes back on him and led him away to be crucified. Someone shouting, Lord, come back He struggled and stumbled, trying to carry that heavy wood cross. Along the road, they came across a man named Simon from Cyrene, and they made him carry Jesus' cross to a place called Gal Galagtha, which means skull. It was about nine o'clock in the morning. High on that hill, there were three crosses. Jesus' arms were stretched out wide on the cross. They nailed Jesus' hands and feet on the cross that was in the middle. They put a sign above the cross because they wanted to make fun of Jesus. The sign read, The King of the Jews. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them for they don't understand what they are doing. Ha! Huh. What kind of king is he? He is hanging there on that cross. If he really was a king, he'd save himself. King of the Jews, that's a joke. They thought if Jesus really was a king, the kind of king they understood, Jesus could save himself. And indeed, he could have. He stayed on that cross to save them, us, and all people. Soldiers were there, and they also made fun of Jesus. Jesus' mother Mary 
and some other women were there along with one of the disciples, John. They were so very sad, but they wanted Jesus to know that they were there for him. They loved Jesus very much. Before he died, Jesus told his mother to care for John, to care for John, and he told John to care for his mother. Criminals were on the other crosses. One of the criminals seemed to recognize that Jesus must be the Son of God, and he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus promised that criminal, Today you will be with me in paradise. That day, that criminal was forgiven by Jesus. From noon to 3 p.m., great darkness covered that place. Jesus was thirsty, and they gave him sour wine to drink. Jesus cried out to his father for help. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? About three o'clock, Jesus spoke these words to his Father in heaven. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. And then he breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in half from top to bottom. The earth shook like an earthquake and the rocks were split. People began to be very frightened and they ran away. <laughs> Truly, this man was the Son of God. Jesus was nailed to that cross with his arms stretched out like he was giving a huge hug to all of humanity. Even as he was about to breathe his last breath, he forgave those who had put him to death. Someone's crying, Lord, come by. Someone's crying, Lord. Kumbaya, someone's crying, Lord, Kumbaya, oh Lord, Kumbaya. A wealthy man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a follower of Jesus, went to Pilate to ask if he might place Jesus' body in a tomb he owned that was in the nearby garden. Pilate agreed. Joseph wrapped Jesus' body in clean cloth placed the body in the tomb, and rolled a large rock to cover the opening to the tomb. Many women were there, including Jesus' mother. Because the Sabbath was about to begin, the women would have to wait for Jesus' body with special oils and spices. The high priest asked Pilate to have soldiers guard Jesus' tomb so no one could remove his body and claim he had risen from the dead. Pilate agreed. Everyone except the soldiers left because it was Jewish Sabbath. Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, Lord, kumbaya. Early morning on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Salome and another woman gathered oils and spices and got ready to make their way to the tomb where Jesus was laid to rest. <laughs> it's been three days and we have to go check on Jesus' body. But how are we going to move the big stone? There are three of us. We can do it. <laughs> Much to their surprise, when they arrived at the tomb, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. Look. <laughs> Has been rolled. Has been rolled away. And the soldiers, and the soldiers are gone. Let's go, Let's go check on Jesus' body. body. <laughs> when they entered the tomb, they saw an angel dressed in a white robe sitting to the side. Shane, where? Where is Jesus? The women were afraid. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised from the dead, and he's not here. Look, there's the place where they laid him. It's, he's been raised, he's alive. 
The angel said, yes. Now, Peter, tell, go tell Peter and the disciples the good news and tell them to go to Galilee. There you will see Jesus. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go tell everybody. Jelly, jelly. So the three women left to find the disciples. They were filled with joy and fear because they didn't understand what had happened. Suddenly, Jesus met them. It was Jesus. He was alive for sure. They worshipped him, and then he sent them to tell the disciples the good news. Jesus has risen. He is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. get it? That's why Pastor Keith keeps saying we are people of hope. Because we are. When Jesus rose from the dead that Easter morning, lives, all lives were changed. Normal, normal would never be the same. That was, that is good. This sure is a story of hope. Our story of hope. This is our story because God has named us his beloved children, all people everywhere. Embrace the story. Hold on to the hope. Share the story and know that you are dearly loved. Christ, Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Is risen. Is risen. Is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.